Good morning again, guys. So, all rubbed down. Chop the dowels off with, I normally use a hacksaw blade with some foam over it so I can hold it by hand. And oh, when you chop your hacks, uh, when you chop your dowels off, if you ever use dowels, then uh, don't throw them away because you can get two or three uses out of a dowel. I just keep them, put them in there. Because obviously a dowel's got two ends. Unless you're using it to fix two bits of wood together, bits of wood together, you would use the whole lot. But if you're just using it to finish off like that, then you can just chop it off and reuse until you've got nothing left. So it's all done. Um, oh yes, on yesterday's video, now I've seen it, I forgot to mention, well, we mentioned drill depths, obviously as far as you can go and as deep as you can go, but I wanted to add to that, that try, unless you're putting a back plate on, don't go all the way through with a drill bit, if you were doing a smaller bit of wood, because you're just exposing the back and it would let the cold in and moisture. So always try and keep a minimum of an inch uh, at the bottom for insulation. So I'll just add that to yesterday. So this is all done now. It's lovely and finished off. It's come up really nice. So what we're gonna do now is gonna chop up the bamboo and put that in. I normally do, so what's this? This is a five inch hole. So I'm gonna do four and a half. So I like to keep the bamboo just shy of the surface because it gives it just that little maybe you go an inch I mean you don't you can go whatever you like I might even do an inch actually and um, it gives it that little bit more shelter because these act as overhangs and you know it's all about the placement and the shelter from the wind and rain along with plants you know as we said food host plants but you know unless you've got really good shelter from the wind and rain you're not going to get a lot of bees um and while we're on that subject obviously i've in the picture this was going to be a ground i always try and tip them forward i've mentioned that before but any, any water that gets in you can uh, it, it can get out so if you're hanging off a fence you can do it so that it just slightly tips forward that's always a good tip if it's on the ground i don't like them on the ground then you need a bigger roof but if it is on the ground the trouble is you get the water rain hits the ground and splashes up into the holes so even though the picture does show that it's only really good to put them on the ground if they're on the edge of something like the edge of a patio or the edge of um, you know a built-up area something where the rain isn't going to splash off the ground and go into the holes all right so let's do the bamboo and we'll come back so before I move on and finish doing all the bamboo I thought I'd give you a couple of tips and tricks on how to cut it and drill it. Sounds silly, how hard can that be, right? But it can be potentially dangerous because, you know, it's, it's horrible stuff, bamboo. It's bendy and twisty and it's long. And uh, so essentially what I do is I get five to 10 lengths and I tape them together all the way down. And then I put them on the chop saw, clamp down a uh, the mark of where I want, about four and a half inches and then slowly feed that through and cut them all first. Uh, obviously, if you haven't got a chop saw, then you can still use a handsaw on this, but being very careful. Once they're cut, you end up with a load of lengths. Uh, when you're doing your lengths, keep the smaller sizes to one side because, and you will, as the bamboo tapers down, you get smaller sizes at the ends because when you're filling your habitat, put the big bits in and then the small bits you can put into smaller holes to clamp or push the, all the bamboo outwards to clamp it against the outside of the habitat. It's going to be glued as well, but it's a really good trick that. So keep all the really small ends to one side, put the bigger bits in first, and then hammer in the small bits to make it compress it into the edges, okay? Uh, so yeah, so, and then when you're drilling it, this is a difficult one because I hold it, but you shouldn't really. Um, if, you, if you've got it still taped in, in, in sections, you could hold it and do it. But I, I personally, I can't advise anyone to do that because it is dangerous. You um, can clamp it down, put it in a vise, and then drill it with a hand drill or, you know, put it, uh, put it on a something like this and do it in a pillar drill. But I can't really advise to hold it like I do, so please don't do that. Um, the whole size is, you're, all you're trying to do is get the middle husk out. So these are, I think I'm using six mil for these smaller ones. 
but I'll use a, a lot of different ones. For these bigger ends here, I'll probably use eight mil to clean those out. A couple of them are actually okay. I think that's from where I did the last cut before and I was drilling them and then cutting them. So anyway, I hope that helps when you're drilling them, sawing your bamboo. Uh, next shot, it will be finished off and I'll be putting it in. Right, I keep thinking of things to tell you. When you cut your bamboo, obviously it wouldn't be as bad as this. It would with a handsaw, but uh, I cut this one individually, so it's a really rare example, but you will get this furring on the tops. It, using a chop saw with an old blade isn't the best, but when you join them all together, it holds them together and they chop neater. But even so, you will get a lot of this furring. And to clean it all up, simple trick, get a bucket, put them all in the bucket, and shake it around for like five minutes. And you can see the stuff coming off of it. It also empties the holes too. So it's a really good trick that. And I thought while I was cutting, I thought I'd tell you how much bamboo you need. Whenever you do something like this, like a little hole like this, you think, ah, oh, I won't need a lot. It's about one eight foot length for two and a half square inches. So this here will use four lengths of eight foot bamboo. And you can see there, there's loads. And that's just for that little hole. And I doubt either I'll have nothing left over or I'll actually need to cut some more. So yeah, it's always a bit deceptive. So before you put the bamboo in, lay down a thin bed of PVA wood adhesive. Um, I use a weatherproof one because it's outside. And what this does is, if you jam the bamboo in, as I discussed earlier with putting in the smaller ones at the end, it will keep them in for a fairly long time. But as they, the wood expands and contracts every year, some will fall out. You can put a mesh over it to stop that happening. I don't like doing that. So I always put this in as well and it just stops it coming out for, well, it'll outlive the habitat generally. So yeah, in the end, I had to use another two lengths of bamboo. It's unbelievable how little it goes. So that was six lengths of bamboo for Get now is this five inches by five inches six eight foot lengths so always be aware of that when you're making one of these you need a lot more than you think so yeah it's all hammered in uh, I always use a bit of wood and tap them all down once I've put them in and put small bits in so it's really strong it's not moving at all so yeah I was hoping to get done today but I think we'll finish off tomorrow now so I'll see you then